It's 8-Bit Squid here, and welcome back to another Playmaker tutorial in Unity. Uh, in this tutorial, we are going to be making a timer and having something happen when that timer hits zero. In our case, a game over. So, um, before we jump right into it, remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more tutorials from me. And we're just going to go right into it. So, I'm just using an old scene here, this is from my Doors tutorial. Uh, there'll be a card in the top somewhere, hopefully, if I remember. <clears throat> so we're going to create an empty object and we'll call this Timer. Okay, and then we want to uh, add an FSM to our Timer. And we'll do a Float Subtract. And we'll make a new global variable called time and we're going to subtract one every frame every second okay and we'll call this one uh, lose time get rid of that all right and just to, just to keep it a bit separate we're going to add a new fsm and we are going to do a we can probably do it on the same one actually just to keep things tidy Okay, we're going to do a convert seconds to string. Okay, and this is what we need here. So we're gonna make sure one every second, every frame, sorry. And our second variable, we are gonna choose our time. And then string variable, we're gonna create a new one, we'll call it time underscore string. And this is where we just want to make a few changes. So, uh, we can delete some of this because this here is for hours. So we're gonna want, if you want minutes, you can keep this one. If you want seconds, that one. And then we can delete the end one here for milliseconds. So in my case, I'm just gonna do a second timer. Okay, and we'll save that. Okay, now we're going to want to show our timer, but obviously at the moment we don't have a time on it. So we're going to open our global variables, variables on the cog, and global variables. And we find my time, and let's say we've got 30 seconds to beat this level, so we'll set the value to 30. Okay, and then we're going to need to add a panel. Uh, actually, not as panel, we just need a canvas, sorry. Okay, and then we're gonna add a object. We're gonna add, I'd have to use legacy here, uh, text, because unless there's a plugin for Playmaker, it won't work with um, Text Mesh Pro, I don't think. We'll call this timer. Okay, let's focus in on this. Okay, and we'll do a zero, zero. And we're gonna wanna make it Bigger. So first of all, with our canvas, we're going to want to make sure that it is. We can have a scale with screen size, or we can do world space, a uh, screen space camera, and put our camera in here. And our canvas now matches our screen. Uh, we can put a timer. Let's put that to thirty. Still now, okay, one hundred. Uh, I think maybe 150. There we go. <clears throat> and the only problems with this is going to be that, uh, in this case, stuff is going to be behind it. So we can move that up. Uh, ordering layer plus five. So you can change it here, ordering layer, to get your canvas above it. Okay, and then our timer, I'm gonna make it bold. And I want it a color what's gonna stand out, so not maybe red. Yellow works quite well in this one. And we can see in our game view there. Okay, so, ah, that's why free aspect. Okay, let me just change that. There we go, okay. Let me just move this down here as well, make it a bit easier to see things. Okay, so I'm going to then keep you up here 
I'm going to anchor that, clicking on the cent mid center here, Alt, and then I'm going to anchor it to the top, pressing Alt and then clicking. And then let's make sure it's all in the middle. And then what we need to do here is add two things. So we're going to call this show time. Okay, and here show time. Action browser, we want to uh, do a UI text set text. Make sure you choose text set text, not a field. Okay, and then we're going to choose uh, owner. Yep. Change this to be a variable and choose our time string variable every frame. Now let's hit play and make sure that is working. We may actually need to make that a bit bigger because it will say minutes on it. So there we go, seconds showing up. And we can actually delete the colon to get rid of that. So if you don't want that there, we can actually get rid of that completely. So now it will just literally have our 30 second timer. Hit play. And there we go. We now have our timer running. Perfect. But we need to um, have it so something will happen when it hits zero. Make that a bit bigger. Okay, so we're going to add our time master. Uh, You could just do this on a timer, but sometimes you know it's easier to use an empty game object just to uh, know where thing is. We're going to want three states. We'll call this compare time. Say have time, and then time up, and we'll call this time check. All right, and we're going to have two events have time and time up. <clears throat> we're going to add these to here, have time and then time up, link them up. And both of these are going to want finished. Well, actually, just have time will want to be have finished. So we're going to want to recheck. So here we're going to do a float compare. And in this one, we're going to do a wait. And in this case, for this one, we're just going to do a uh, scale time for that. So I'm going to set that to zero, adjust fixed delta time so that no matter what system it's running on, it will always act the same. And we're going to do a float time, a zero if it's equal. Time up, less than, time up, greater than, have time, every frame. And then we're going to click on here and we're going to set this to 0 0.03. Uh, this is just obviously to break the infinite loop because if it just goes to here, to here, or well, just to here, nothing is going to happen. Maybe about maybe an infinite loop where you'll actually crash the game. So I think really 0 0.3 is maybe the smallest amount where it won't cause an infinite loop. It's enough of a break for the system to actually not crash from it. <clears throat> right, so hopefully now we'll hit play. When the timer hits zero, our player, you should see all the stuff, the animations in the background stop moving. Now obviously for this one, you don't have to scale time. What happened? you can do is if you've got like a game over screen, you could have it actually activate that game object if you wanted. Uh, it's all up to you what you do. And there we go, animations have stopped. So perfect. 
Okay, so that is it for this timer tutorial. Uh, if you find it helpful, remember to hit that like button and also subscribe for more tutorials from me. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, 8-Bit Squid out.